Hi there guys, Rick here. Hope you're all doing extremely well out there. I know I am. I hope you've enjoyed that little video at the start of this video. That's going to be the subject of today's little lesson. I uploaded that video onto my Instagram page yesterday and um, had a few people inquiring as to whether I'd make a YouTube video and uh, hence this video. I'm going to go into a little bit more depth with how I approach a sequence like that. Uh, firstly though, um, for one, make sure you subscribe to my, or follow me on Instagram rather. Uh, and for two, uh, check out my website. It's currently 30% off all downloads. Use the code RGSAVE30 at checkout. It's a great way to support what I do. Okay, let's get straight into this sequence. Uh, the first thing of note is that uh, when I'm practicing anything like this, I've been working on legato um, a lot recently. Um, so what I usually do when I'm doing a sequence like this is I turn the reverb off and the delay off if I'm using any at all. So I've got a, a dry, dry tone here. Okay. So it really forces me to be ultra accurate with um, finger placement and tone and everything. So that's what I like to do. You don't have to, you know, do what I do, but uh, um, I'm just sharing that with you. <laughs> Okay, so with this sequence, it's, um, it's nothing too outlandish. Basically, we've just got an A minor um, pentatonic sequence with a mixture of one, two, and three notes per string. So um, with this particular sequence, it goes in this order, starting on the D string. It goes two, three, one, three. And that stays consistent with as we move through each position, okay? So... Um, let's do it nice and slowly. We're really after controlling everything, making sure the finger placement is good. We're controlling the dynamics. We're making sure we're muting correctly so there's no extraneous noise going on. Okay. So, and also, I like to play it nice and steady, nice and slow. Okay, let's take the first part. We're going to start at fret five. Okay, so it's, we're basically following that shape. Okay, so here's the first bit. Oh, I forgot to mention I'm doing this all left hand only. So a mixture of, of hammers and pull-offs, so no, no picking, okay? Continue on, continuing on. And then slide into the next position on the last note. So once more. Now, once we've got that sequence, all we do is move into the next position and apply the same sequence of notes. That's it. We're just moving it throughout each position. Okay, so that's our first shape. So we've now moved up to fret seven. We can follow that sequence of two, three, one, three numbers of notes per string uh, with the same pattern. So. Slide and again. Okay, excellent. It gets a bit awkward when you're doing the left hand hammers from nowhere when crossing strings. Uh, it's especially with these weaker fingers, four and three. It can be a real pain in the ass. But you've just got to be. Um, you know, you just got to stick with it and just keep practicing it, you know. So, we're now into this position. So, third position. Third shape, rather. Again, keeping things nice and clean. We don't have to slam the hell out of the strings either. Just a light touch will yield a you know a wonderful sounding note. You know, um, so but it, again, it's up to you. Some people play you know heavy handedly, you know, and that works for them. Um, but um, I don't like to induce too much tension into my playing. 
so I like to keep things nice and light. It's kind of like a, a compromise, uh, you know, a balance between, you know, um, a light touch but getting the, the best out of the note. So sl sliding up from 10 to 12. So. Okay, uh, once more, let's do that once more. And then we're on to the last shape, well I think it's the last shape anyway. So. Bollocks. Once more. Notice I changed the fingering there. I crossed these three strings with four, three, one. The second time I did it, I did four, two, one. It's a good idea to be consistent with the fingerings that you choose. You know, if you chop and change in between, then you're guaranteed that you're gonna fluff it at some point. So, um, you know, it's a good idea to just pick a fingering, stick with it. If you need to change it later on down the line, then you can do, by all means, you can do it. Um, but try and avoid doing what I just did then. Then the final shape here. Okay, that's the thing in its entirety. So uh, again, what I would advise you to do is just if you if you want to do it take the reverb off the delay off just keep things nice and clear nice and clean uh keep things nice and slow and and try and relax as much as possible concentrate on good finger placement make sure that your um muting technique is up to scratch as well because uh, it's going to sound a complete mess you know this is why i like to take the reverb and delay off um uh, and also use a fair amount of gain as well um because if you can control, if you're using a fair amount of gain, but you can control everything and make it sound clean, you know, that's, that, that's a really, really great thing, great skill to have. So anyway, I hope that's helped you and um, just take it nice and steady and everything will be a-okay. <laughs> All right. Anyway, thanks a lot for checking in, guys, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Cheers.